One day after four Americans were killed in an ISIS claimed attack in Syria, there are reports today of intense airstrikes in the eastern part of the country. And while ISIS is making its presence known in this war torn region, investigative journalist Max Blumenthal tells RT America that there's another key player very much involved. For the first time, an open admission that Israel has been supporting Syrian insurgent factions in the Golan area. Um, so the ambiguity is gone. It's all out in the open. And for years, we were called conspiracists for talking about Israel's relationship with the Syrian insurgents. But now it's out in the open, and it is an implicit threat from Israel. Still, these latest attacks in Syria are not changing President Trump's initial decision to withdraw troops from the region. During a White House meeting yesterday with several GOP senators, Trump told the group, quote, we're not going to continue the way we've done it, referring to American troops in Syria and Afghanistan. So earlier today, I spoke with former Pentagon official Michael Maloof about the other key players involved in this ongoing battle. They are still a threat, but not, not, the, not, the, 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 not the threat that they used to be with the caliphate and then and taking over territory. But as an insurgency group, they're going to be much more dangerous because they can, they can pop up almost anywhere. Uh, I don't think it's going to alter the uh, calculus as far as uh, Trump, President Trump's uh, notion of, of uh, receding troops back into uh, uh, Iraq and as a staging area, really. And, uh, but but you you almost it's almost impossible to guard against what happened uh, yesterday on the ground except it, it appeared that, uh, that 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 security was very lax uh, and to have someone walk in and right. and with a vest uh, explosive vest uh, really showed a breakdown in, in security it was supposed to be an area that was already um, uh, uh, pacified, if you will. Right, and but, swept. And, and, yeah, and it just was not the case. So would you say that uh, even though the president promised to withdraw the troops from Syria, it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean bring them home. It just means remove them right. from Syria. Yeah, I think so. And I think uh, there's something deeper that going on here. And I think if you look to John Bolton and to Pompeo and what they've been doing in recent uh, days, and, and along with what uh, Vice President Pence said yesterday, it shows that they're, get, they're preparing something much larger and that Iraq itself could become mm. the new hub for conducting U.S. foreign policy unless okay. s for some reason the Iraqis decide to kick us out. Okay. Now, the president uh, barely spoke about this attack. He, mm -hmm. uh, he's planning on doing so, mm -hmm. I, I believe, from the Pentagon today. Um, it's been 24 hours. He mm -hmm. hasn't addressed the nation about this attack. Mm -hmm. What would cause the president to take so long before addressing the country about it? I think it's because he doesn't want to um, give the impression that this is altering his his uh, his vision of okay. what he intends to do. Yeah, you're going to have these skirmishes that they're to be expected, but it's not like a full-fledged attack where you have hundreds of militants coming in and taking over a city. That's okay. not the case in Mombij. Uh But you're going to have these isolated instances. I, that's why I don't see it altering his uh, his game plan. Uh, within the next 120 days of just uh, pushing the troops back into uh, Syria. And now, Mike Pence says that America's foreign policy is rooted in Trump's uh, America mm -hmm. First agenda. He says the, the U.S. faces this wolf pack mm -hmm. of rogue states, which mm -hmm. uh, he included Iran, Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. Your thoughts on that? Well, we've managed to upset a lot of people lately. <laughs> and uh, it, what it re really reflects uh, contrary to what Trump campaigned on is that the neocons are back in, in place. They are there to re, re, continue the foreign policy that they conducted during the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think we're seeing. To, and they're also uh, implying regime change, uh, not only with Iran, but Venezuela right. and, 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 and Nicaragua. So it, it, it's like Trump is saying one thing, his, uh, his, his Trump administration people are saying something else. Right. And you wonder if Trump is even in charge of his foreign policy. All right. It's a, I guess that's a sign when you have uh, Bolton in place there. Yes. Thank you so much, as always, giving us your Pleasure. insights and expertise. Mike Thank Maloof. You. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.